Welcome to The Author's Journey with number one international best-selling author and in-demand publisher, Rebecca Hall Greider. Today, we'll showcase the works of an amazing best-selling author, find out the story behind their book, and explore ways to bring your message powerfully forward. Now, here's your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. Welcome, everyone. I hope that you're having an amazing day. Honored to be connecting in with you on the author's journey, where we take a moment to talk with best-selling authors in a candid, real way, where they pull back the curtain and really share what the journey is really like to bring their book forward. And I'm hoping you as a listener get to have an inside view of an author's mind and what it takes to bring your book forward and have it become a bestseller, what it's really like. And for those of you who are wanting to bring your message forward, wanting to bring your book forward, I hope that you get some great ideas and insights. In fact, get a piece of paper and ready to take notes for those those downloads or those insights or oh my goodness I want to try that whatever that moment is I encourage you to capture that information in real time and here's what's really exciting about the show is it's for you here's an opportunity for you to get to be poured into to listen to receive to gain insight and an inside view of what it's like to bring a book forward so with that let's take a moment take a breath breathe in Beautiful. Take another beautiful breath. And it's just a moment for us to slow down a little bit. Connect in. And actually be still enough to receive. Sometimes we're moving so fast, we can't hear. Everything's just noise and distraction. So taking a breath and slowing down just a couple moments helps lower your stress levels, your cortisol levels brings you present. It helps you release what no longer serves so you can breathe in and bring in all that does. And in that space, it's great to think about what it is that you need today to encourage you, to support you, to help you bring your book forward. What do you need today? Just feel it. Sometimes we're moving so fast we forget to check in. We forget to, to see. We forget to listen. So I invite you to take a moment and listen to what's speaking to your heart and to your spirit. Beautiful. Well, as we're connecting in, I'm just thrilled and excited to introduce our amazing guest today. Her name is Carrie Portel, and she is a survivor, an empowerment leader, an international best-selling author and an inspiring speaker. After surviving being hit by an impaired driver, she learned to thrive despite the pain and disabilities this car crash caused her. She discovered that no matter what was going on around her, how she chose her attitude each day dictated whether she was a success or failure that day. She is passionate about helping you mindfully and purposely choose your attitude each and every day, helping you tap into your resilience so you can shine. Please lean in and warmly welcome the powerful and dynamic Carrie Portel to the show. Welcome. Thank you, Rebecca. You are so welcome. Thrilled to have you joining us today. And I wanted to... Take a moment and really look at why this attitude that you have that is so important to you, choosing the attitude, why that became so important to you, so much so that you were led to write a book, you are led to stand in that place and help people break through their limitations, tapping into the resilience. Why is that work personally so important to you? Sure. The uh, attitude part of it, I could see was really negatively affecting myself and and how I just tried to exist every day. And I would see my impatience and my irritability transferring to my family, so my husband and my kids who are always around me. And when I saw that happening, I like I had to pull back and say, oh, no, 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 no. Carrie, you, you can't do this. And, you know, I know everything's eating at you. 
you know, so deeply right now, but you're going to have to find a different outlet because this, this is not going to work for you. Okay, every single day that I wake up, my eyelids flip open, I'm going to have to choose what kind of day it's going to be. And it's, it's been like that ever since. Mm. And I love that. So purposely mindful and that awareness that not only it was affecting your experience, but it was affecting people around you, that it's contagious. <laughs> we have that influence. Oh, yes. Of, of effect. Yes. And, and I think negative is much more contagious than the positive is. You got the positive. <laughs> Yes, and it's it's kind of sad sometimes we can go to the negative so easily. So that purposeful, that reminder to choose the attitude and, and to be positive and to mindfully spread that. I was thinking, I even hear sometimes that it takes more energy to smile than to frown. I wonder if it's similar wiring that somehow that is a way that we can um, easily go versus choosing the opposite, choosing to smile, choosing to, um, regardless of circumstances, echo out positively, positivity and to choose what matters most and echo that out. And I love that you stand for that, that you really stand in this place to help others make that choice because whether we know it or not, we are. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Beautiful. Well, we are getting ready to go to our first break. The time goes so fast. But before we do that, I wanted to take a quick moment and have you share the title of your book and why you were led to bring your book forward. The title is Facing Life Head-On, Healing with Courage, Gratitude, and Attitude. And Mm -hmm. I didn't intentionally set out to write a book, but it started as a blog and more of just a purging process. Mm -hmm. And I realized every time that I purged, I healed a little bit. Um, So I kept writing those blog posts. And then eventually went ahead and decided to share that with the rest of the world and uh, combine those blog posts and put it into a book. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I love that that insight as well, that, that every time you shared, it healed a little bit within you. Um, and I'm curious, as you did that and you shared it out, so there was that, that healing within a little bit, and then the sharing out, what sort of a response did you get that made you be willing to share it with more people? The response was, whoever I spoke to, they would come to me with a challenge that they had that, Mm -hmm. you know, may not be exactly like mine, but they were saying, I understand how you feel and how hard it is. And now I know that what you did, I can use in my challenge and get through the same way. And that's what caused me to you know, just continuing to share because, man, it is hard to share this stuff. It's so emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that, but that it had such an impact and it spoke to them personally and encouraged them on their challenges as well. It's just beautiful. And I celebrate that you leaned in to being willing to share, even if it being uncomfortable or revisiting certain things, but being willing to to help others is, is truly beautiful. And as we go to our first commercial break, listeners, I want you to think about what Carrie has shared and Are there things that you have shared out or shared with a friend that have touched their heart, that's encouraged them, that's had an impact? And perhaps that's something that you could be adding into what you're bringing forward into a a book or a blog or finding another way to share that insight, that wisdom, that experience, because it does touch lives and it can make an impact if we're willing to share it. And with that, we're going to continue our conversation in just a moment. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. 
Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time, that moment to think about those things that we share. And part of the sharing is um, releasing and can be a little bit healing when it's being held and received by another. And then it also can have this powerful effect where it impacts them. It becomes part of the tools they have in their toolbox, another perspective they can add to how they're approaching the life to help support them. Those are great things to start to collect, to find a way to bring forward and share with more people, just like Carrie has done. So powerful. And it can not only help us in the sharing, but can help those who receive the information, the journey, the experience, the message. And I carry, I love that you shared that before we went to our first break, that part of the reason you decided to share it with more people, so bring it forward as a book, is because you saw the impact that it had on those who received the shares that you talked to, that read the blog, and your willingness and your desire to share it with more people. And I'm curious, as you did that and you started to take those steps, were there things on the journey of taking it from a blog format to creating it, putting it into a book to bring forward? Were there things along the journey there that surprised you that you had to face and maybe overcome? You know, there are a few things that when I started really getting into the details, for the book, I didn't realize how much they still affected me and Mm -hmm. I guess how raw that emotion still was until I really started, you know, getting deep in it. And that part, it was, it was really kind of, it was emotionally exhausting, I guess is the right phrase for it. And I I would just take some breaths and, and like calm down, I guess, you know, because my heart was just pitter pattering so fast. Yeah. Hmm. And and how did you, was that pausing and, and taking a breath and kind of um, giving yourself a moment to recenter, did that help you move forward? Because I can also see there being a temptation to stop because it's hard <laughs> and, and it's uncomfortable and um, going into those things and reliving some of it. Um, how did you build support around yourself to be able to push through it? Or what are some of the things that helped you? Um, I know the pausing and the recentering, but keep going and be willing to do so. Yeah, the the, the pausing definitely uh, could have been a deterrent. I would have allowed that fear and that doubt to overcome me. But in mm-hmm. those moments where I had to be a little bit more mindful, I had to be my own coach and say, Carrie, you know why you're doing this. You know that someone out there is going to get just as much from the book as they do, you know, when they hear you speak. And I I have a wonderful husband who every time that this doubt would enter my mind, he said, Carrie, just write the book, write the book, just finish it. And um, between him and, and a friend of mine who recently passed away, Last fall, between those two, they were saying, Carrie, just finish the book. You know you've got mm-hmm. it in you. It's not like you have to make up a story. Just just put your head down and, you know, go through the emotion just as if you were there so that the reader can understand exactly what you went through and in hopes, you know, that they can make it through the beginning of their 
I love that you had such powerful cheerleaders when you were doubting or questioning or wanting to give up at times that they're encouraging you and reminding you of your purpose and you were tapping into your why and remembering that to carry you through um, to keep pushing through to to bring it forward because it is it, it is a process and there's a lot of steps involved in bringing a book forward and some stop midway. And don't come forward to the world. And I celebrate that yours continued, that you leaned in and had cheerleaders around you and allowed that into your space to support you, to cheer you on, and to remind you, uh, and to push you when there was time to be pushed, (laughs) and to encourage you to bring it forward. And it was launched, and it became an international bestseller in multiple categories and countries. And it, to me, that is such a powerful indicator of how much your book was needed and that you were willing to stand in that place and to share it. And that's just the beginning because that was just the launch, the start, (laughs) and it gets to continue and, and ripple out. And as you look back on the journey, is there a a favorite moment either in the creation part or the launching part that sticks in your heart and mind? My favorite part of the launch was actually the launch day. It gave me a confirmation that someone out there really wanted to read what I had written. Um, And my followers had been with me for so long but you only talk about more of the superficial. You don't really get into that detail. And it, it was definitely nerve-wracking for me. But I knew going into that detail that someone out there was really going to get something from my challenges and, and how I was able to overcome them. And one of the one of the big things that sticks out to me mm-hmm. during the creation process is the cover. Creating the cover was probably my favorite of the entire thing. Um, I I wanted the book to be from my perspective, and that is how I wanted the cover to reflect as well. And and that's mm-hmm. exactly what the image does on the front is reflects my perspective. I love that. So let's let's take a moment and talk about both both of these things. So let's let's start with the cover because the cover is something as readers we don't always get to know a lot about. We just are connecting with it, drawn to it or not <laughs> as we're looking and considering books to lean into. But I think it's really special to know some of the thought behind the cover, why it was created the way it was, what it means to you and why you chose that as the bridge, the connection between your your powerful content and the potential reader. So you chose that as the container, the bridge. So I'd love for you to describe your cover and why you designed it the way you did. So I love that it it was important that it comes from your perspective. So can you can you describe it for those who haven't seen the cover? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I was hit head on by a drunk driver. So I was driving and that's the way that I tell my story is me looking through that windshield at what was going to happen to us. So we, my publisher and I, we found an image that gave that same perspective. I'm, you know, the, the reader's looking through my windshield, looking at the road ahead of me and from my car. And I, I used to be a full-time photographer and I knew that the image needed to, to have a lot of pop, a lot of contrast. And it's right at twilight is, is the, cover image and that our, our car crash happened around 620 in the evening. So, it, you know, it's right then whenever going from day to night and kind of the, um, I had them sneak in a, an image of a butterfly and that's kind of become mm-hmm. the symbol of my journey because butterflies are a rebirth, a healing. And that's exactly what had happened during our journey. Mm. So powerful. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So they can look for the image of the butterfly that is on the cover and in the scene and that perspective of you looking at the windshield at what was coming at you, where what you were about to go through in that that powerful moment at, at twilight and capturing that energy of that. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that why and and what that image is and what it captures. And that's such a powerful bridge for the story that it contains, that your book contains, to 
bring it forward and connect it with the readers. And then I loved how you were sharing that the launch day was was powerful, that that was such a, a special day, that confirmation of your message being needed and having so many friends and family and um, people coming together to support you, you and cheer you on and help you reach so many people around the world to it becoming an international bestseller in multiple categories and multiple countries is a really, really powerful experience. And so if you reflect back on that day, the launch day when it was released and shared with the world, is there a moment in that that kind of sticks in your mind and represents that or just has touched your heart? Yeah, the when we hit bestseller within just a couple hours, I thought, oh, oh my goodness. Like my my jitters had they started to ease. And because I, you know, the last thing you want is to create all of this, this hype and saying, Hey, can you come out and support me one more time? I know, yeah, I've asked you, you know, many times in the last 10 years, but on this day, it's really important. And to see that much support in such a short time to make it a bestseller, oh man, your heart just burst. Mm. So beautiful. Love it. And I love that it went even beyond that. It became a a bestseller and then an international bestseller. So powerful. (laughs) So um, I just, I celebrate that with you. And I'm curious, as you look back on the creation of the cover, on pushing through, reliving some things and sharing that information, that content, kind of pushing through blocks to to bring it forward or those, those rough moments and the cheerleaders coming alongside you and bringing it forward. And now it's out in the world and you reflect back on the journey. Do you have a piece of advice or tip for anybody and authors out there that are thinking about bringing the book forward or maybe they're stuck in one of those tough places or they're thinking, well, now what do do I launch it? How do I share it? Any piece of advice or tip for them? Yes. I, one of the things that I struggled with is that I, I just I felt like it had to be perfect whenever I submitted it to the editor, and that's it, that is not what you need to do. Otherwise, you will never edit ever. And I feel like if you just go ahead and puke it out, and you know, go back and edit it a couple times, then it's off. It's out of your hand. And we sent it in, and that way. You kind of committed, I guess, to a certain point. I, I love that. So this this reminder of, and it's not about perfection. You don't have to have it perfect before you send it to the editor. Getting it off your plate, handing it over to them. I also think that creates a little bit of separation a little bit so that you can release it and commit to bringing it forward and then letting the editors do their magic and then um, working alongside you to, to bring it forward. I think that's a really important step that releasing, handing over, trusting that it doesn't have to be perfect before you do that. Just being willing to bring it forward. Is there any piece of advice or encouragement you have um, that you want to add to that? So that willingness to, to let it go, doesn't have to be perfect. Hand it over to the editor. Yes. Whenever doubt starts to creep in your mind, and it always does on some level, if you can find someone that you trust wholeheartedly to tell you the truth and just be there with support and regardless of which way that it goes, don't be afraid to seek out a person and and ask, you know, I, I need some help right now. I'm really letting a lot of doubt and negativity enter my mind, and I need somebody to help me kind of get out of it and, and talk me out of it. Don't be afraid to reach out to that person. Beautiful. I love that. Really, really great advice. I know one thing that um, we tell some of the authors that we get to work with, I said, you know, we're always going to tell you the truth. We're always going to tell you the truth. But that means if we tell you it's great, you have to believe that too. You can't just believe the other, what needs to be tweaked or moved. You have to believe all of it. And we're going to tell you the truth, uh, bringing it forward. So I love the seeking that out allowing that support in so that they can help bring you back to center, really remind you of the truth, remind you of your greatness. When when we can forget sometimes or we get bogged down or self-doubt comes in, really reminding you of your purpose and encouraging you and speaking truth back into you. So important. Anything you would add to that? 
I I just think if you're if you've got a story in you, don't let that fear hold you back from telling it. And there is somebody. I guarantee you, there is someone out there who needs to hear your story. And let me never tell you that what you have done, what you have been through, has inspired them in their own life. But you just have to know and understand that someone out there is watching and is being inspired by what you are doing. And you just have to hold that you know, tight to your chest. Beautiful. I love that. Hold that to be true. Trust that. And uh, be willing to lean and follow it. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. We are getting ready to go to our next commercial break. And as we do that, I want you listeners to think about what is that message that is pulling at your heart and spirit? Have you built in that support to encourage you, to cheer you on, to speak truth into you, and to remind you of your purpose? If sometimes we can get lost along the way or we can forget it as we get bogged down in parts of the process, how important it is to remember to bring in that support to encourage us on our journey. And we will look forward to continuing our conversation in just a moment. Explore the poetry of Sam Yao. His book of poems, Soul's Journey, is a number one international bestseller. Sam is a contemporary poet with a unique and highly relatable poetic style to convey the essence of spiritual truths for our time. Readers will find beauty, inspiration, and healing in his words. Get his book, Soul's Journey, today on Amazon.com or visit SamYaoPoetry.com. That's Sam, Y-A-U, Poetry.com. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time to pause and reflect and really think about getting that support for your journey, that it's not a solo journey. You don't need to do it all on your own. And in fact, it's really important to have those cheerleaders and truth tellers in your in your life to support you, to encourage you, to bring you back to center, to remind you of your purpose and your why when maybe you forget it or get a bit disheartened or discouraged on the journey that they can uplift you, speak truth into you and to remind you. So you can keep taking those steps and bring forward all that you're called to bring forward. And I loved Carrie's reminder and encouragement to bring it forward that if you have that call, if you feel that on your heart, trust and know that there is someone out there that needs it. Otherwise, you wouldn't feel that pull. So trust that. Hold that space and lean in to bringing your message forward. And I wanted to to take a moment here. And talk with Carrie and have her share the full title of her book again, where you can get it, and then any final tips or advice that she may have for us today. So, Carrie, with that, can you share your full title, of the, uh, the full title of your book, where to find it, and what are some of the best ways for them to connect in with you? Okay. The title is Facing Life Head On, Healing with Courage, Gratitude, and Attitude. 
And if you want a signed copy, you can get one on my website at carryportel.com. And then it is available in single outlet at Amazon. If you get a book, you can order this from. And I, I think one of my biggest attributes that I, I feel has gotten me through my journey is my ability to lean into the challenge and work through it instead of working around that. And I feel that that, that is my purpose. I, I am here to others, instead of working around their problem, let's work through it. Because mm-hmm. when you the other day, regardless of whether the results really work or not, the satisfaction and the peace that you feel of working through it is so much better than never knowing because you just, you let the fear grab you and and keep you from just getting to the root of, of whatever that challenge is. And that's what I would say is let's just put our heads down and work through it and not around it. I love that. And knowing, I I was just thinking that's got to give such confidence too, and encouragement and strength to discover I can go through this and stand again. I can lean in and come through on the other side. I can do this and I am afraid no longer like that you can lean through, come through to the other side. You don't have to sidestep or go around or let the fear stop you. But you can go through it. I love that. And I also, what it also speaks to me is the through it means I'm going through it, but probably not alone. I can have people on the journey and we help each other through it, walking beside, cheering each other on and supporting each other, not letting fear be that emotion, be the reason not to. Anything you would add to that? Um, I, I think you said it just beautifully. Hmm, thank you. Thank you. And I just celebrate your willingness to share your heart, your experience, your life in such a powerful way and so authentically to really let people learn from it and walk in your shoes to some extent of what that experience was like and to be encouraged and um, inspired on ways they can choose their attitude as they're approaching a really challenging and difficult times. So thank you for bringing your book forward, for spending time with us today. And I just want to make sure one more time, do you mind giving your website or the best way for people to connect in with Uh you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with your audience. Uh, My website is carryportel.com. And then you can find me pretty much on every social media as well. Perfect. I love it. I love it. And as we are leaning in to following you on all of the social medias, I love that, and um, connecting in with your site, are there any projects or things coming up that you want us to be watching for or aware of so we can look for those too? Some in-person conference events again in the fall, and Mm -hmm. I am working on a course slash workshop that is specifically on my book. So I, I'm excited. I'm not exactly sure when that's coming out, but it will mm-hmm. be this year. Oh, I love that. So we get to stay tuned and watch that unfold. Watch for you as a speaker and participating in different events. So that's really exciting. So we get to have more of Carrie. I appreciate that. And we'll stay tuned definitely to see that unfold around your powerful book. Thank you again for joining us. Is there any final tip or a thought you have for our listeners around breaking through limitations or tapping further into resilience or just a reminder for them to carry with them today? Yes, I I would suggest every day that you, when you wake up, stop and make a conscious decision about how you want your day to go. Because if you do not, the first thing that happens to you, if it's negative, that is many times how we live the rest of our day. But if you make a conscious choice in the morning, as soon as you wake up and say, man, today is going to be a good day, it changes everything inside of you. And then you will see your attitude reflected in the others around you. Beautiful. Making that choice every day, first thing in the morning. I love it. Thank you so much, Carrie, for joining us today. I appreciate it. Listeners, I want to thank you for joining us. And as we bring our time together to close, I want to encourage you to take a couple of moments before you rush back out into the day to really choose 
your attitude. Choose how you're going to show up and look for evidence of that to be so. Like this is going to be a great day. Feel that, look for that, be that. And as you step forward, do so mindfully, purposely with that attitude that you are choosing to bring forward each and every day. We'll look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you for tuning in to The Author's Journey. Please join Rebecca Hall Greider for another edition of The Author's Journey podcast every Monday on the Voice America Variety Channel. And until we talk again, use some of the tips and inspiration from today's show to guide you as you lean in to bringing your message forward. 